So now I want to combine number two and number four together. And let's just call it kind of various aspects of being monopolistically competitive. So let's start first with what its characteristics are. Monopolistically competitive firms sell a slightly differentiated product have free entry and exit, and when we think about um, the market structure as a whole, most of the time we see that many firms and many consumers. So this has two significant consequences, these aspects. The first would be is that there'll be no long-run profit. Um, this is because of free entry and exit, which will show why that exists. And number two, what we see here is that the marginal revenue is not the same as the price. In fact, the marginal revenue is less than the price. And this comes from the fact that each sell a slightly different product. So let's give an example here gasoline. But gasoline is specifically from Costco. Because what we're saying here is that um, gasoline itself uh, probably doesn't differ that much from one type of gas station to another. But each gas station certainly tries to tell us and encourage us to think that they're different from each other. So the consequence of that is that demand still equals price, except marginal revenue is less. Now, it's not exactly twice as steep, but it is steeper. The marginal cost is upward sloping, and I still set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost to find the quantity. And then I go up to the demand curve, to find the quantity. So MR equals MC, that gives me the quantity, and then I go up to the demand curve to find the price. Now, one result from this is the existence of a deadweight loss, which you'll typically see me referring to as DWL, standing for deadweight loss. And that would be this triangle right here. But it also creates for us three different possible scenarios. So in these th three possible short run situations, that what we see is I could either have my average total cost curve here, I 
And I could have it here. Or I could have it here. So the placement of the average total cost curve then becomes important because then what we're trying to do here is calculate the profit loss or break even point. So MR equals MC. To find the quantity. And then up to the demand curve to find the price. Then <clears throat> total revenue equals price times quantity which now means that my total revenue is here, here, and here, then total cost equals ATC times Q, which means that I go from my Q and I go and find the costs. Here we see that total cost exceed total revenue. Here we see that total cost equals total revenue. Over here we see that total costs are less than total revenue. Another way of reading these would be that you have a loss, you break even, and that you profit. Now what happens? Because, and only because, there is free entry and exit, these two situations get removed, the loss and the profit. If there is loss, then there will be exit. And as firms exit the industry, what happens is that it drives up the demand. Why? Because each firm is going to have a smaller and smaller share of the total market. Over here, if firms are making money, we will have entry, which means now that each firm gets a smaller and smaller share of the market, which means that my demand curve and marginal revenue curve shift to the left, thus eliminating both situations, giving us this long-term situation. In the long term, it then looks like this. MR equals MC. There's my Q, up to the demand curve to find my price. Total revenue equals total cost, but it is inefficient. And it is inefficient in two ways. First, as measured by the presence of the deadweight loss. That's one indication of inefficiency. Second, I'm not on the lowest point on the ATC curve. So that's my other indication of inefficiency. And that is the monopolistically competitive firm.